When my friends, uh, the owners of the Hayat here, uh, Namita and Arun Saraf, allow me to really explore the great caves of Mumbai as a theme to inspire the entire artwork program. And they said, of course. So Jugeshwari, Mandapeshwar, in a, you know, and of course the great Elephanta became the inspiration. And I called all my artists and I took a boat, took them there and said, let us explore these friezes and re-examine them in terms of the 21st century, what kind of a eternal message they could give. So that's the purpose of all the artwork that you see here. Looking at the great Sadashiv, the male aspect from the very fierce. So it's a sculpture in five parts. The female, the male coming together till it clicks into complete. And there the polarity disappear, which is what Sadashiv is. Some equation, some balance where questions began to form. And I needed a place to take those to a point where I could internalize and offer my tribute to what I think is probably one of the greatest sculptures in the world, which we call Sadashiv. So it's my 21st century tribute to something that was masterfully created in the 6th or 7th century. This sculpture piece is called Becoming. It hasn't become. You're always in the process of becoming. Recreated the story of Shiva and Parvati playing on the chosset, gambling, as indeed marriage is. So I said, why not get a married couple to do these two pictures of the marriage of Shiva and Parvati? Here is Rava, who to impress Shiva, lifts the entire Kailash and Parvati gets scared. Nandi is almost apprehensive until Shiva sort of smilingly and quite gingerly presses the Kailash with one toe to crush the arrogance, the ego of this man who wants to show his prowess. How do you reinterpret this in a contemporary metaphor? deconstruct the, the crushing of arrogance. Of course, it, is, it goes on and on and on. I broke the walls right in, reshifted the panels and the crushing of arrogance in an extremely contemporary interpretation of what is presented at the Elephanta. Anju Dodia did that and she found the metaphor of the two mattresses for the first time. And Atul, looking at the staccato, almost haiku-like images of what marriage constitutes and putting it in those very evocative, evolved cupboards. Nalini Malani evolved a distinct style and uh, has spoken about this subject of the man and the woman in a, the most brilliant manner, did this on the Ardhanarishwa. And this one here is the west window, that's the eastern side of the window that light up and all the nerves are, uh, have the male and the female written into them. Gatani was a contemporary painter, but very, uh, very thorough in her search for craft people and in making things happen. Etch the glass to get the steel thing and do, doing the background painting, which is her style. This is Yogeshwar. I wanted to take it off from the caves and talk about the other aspects of Bombay that strike us and that's in the basement floor. I'd given Krishmachari Bose the paintings of 
their dabbas and their incredible signage of this mine that is not from the village, is not trained and can bring hot food from home. Krishmachari uh, Bose uh, did in a manner that was quite unique. I was very keen to pay a tribute to the tenacity of this city. So I was in an exhibition I think in Delhi where I saw very realistic cockroaches that were climbing up the wall and I found the painter, she was Hema Padhyay and I said, will you make me very realistic homes, uh, slums? So I went with her to about two miles from here, there's a junk market and I bought all the old car doors and called my metal workers to make a, these are all car doors from Maruti, you know, and construct it into this flower and then say now that's the canvas on which you put this. It starts again east-west and it slowly, slowly, slowly comes into whole till it becomes complete. The presence of Shiva, the torrential flow of a youthful Ganga being contained is my tribute to the bar relief and elephanta of Ganga Dharmurti. So I turned to my friend Sudarshan with a simple construction of three half sauvage rocks of marble just to cut them in a way that the bottom part is like the body, the neck of a seated bull looking at the shrine of Shiva. This shrine is a triangle, it's a shrine, it came as a cone. So I opened it up into two halves, as I say, divided into I create, the male and the female. And then you could enter it. And when you enter it, the whole universe comes alive. And I wanted it to be an astronomical instrument. So I got the astronomer Ravel to work with us on this to position this cone in such a way that we could see the first full moon after Shivaratri. I think the past allows you this luxury. It doesn't restrict you from the flow of your own imagination or attaching to it. That is what made it there. Because we kept inventing, reinventing. There is your own personal dharma that gets attached to your understanding of it and if you're a creative person that finds its own way of expressing.